Got a question here about transponder failure procedures. This one comes from John. And it goes like this, uh, his scenario. Uh, you depart an airport with a VFR flight plan. After contacting air traffic control and informing them who you are and what you're and where you're going, you're directed to squawk a transponder code. That's pretty standard. You comply, but ATC advises that you're not coming up on their screen. In other words, your transponder is not working. You have a transponder failure. What's the best course of action? Okay, so there are a whole lot of parts to this, and there's not really one answer. But let's break this down and try to make it simple because I love simple. The fact that your transponder is not working is only really going to be a barrier if you're operating in airspace where a transponder is required. In most airspace, you don't need a transponder to operate. Now, if you fly uh, out of one of the uh, busy terminal areas across the country, like Toronto, Vancouver, Ottawa, Calgary, you fly very close to uh, transponder airspace all the time. But for the rest of the country, uh, it, it probably really doesn't matter, except you're not going to be able to get uh, radar flight following service from air traffic control. Remember that the only airspace that requires a transponder is class A, which is above 18,000 feet, so probably not a factor for anybody flying VFR. Class B, any controlled airspace between 12,500 up to, but not including 18,000. And class C, which is the type that most VFR pilots come in contact with because it is around the, the bigger terminal areas. Uh, and a transponder with mode C is required, mode C being the altitude reporting. Now there's another rider on the transponder airspace rule that says class D and E airspace may be designated as transponder airspace by the minister, but this will be marked clearly on the chart. For example, around, around Toronto, if you're above 6,500 feet within about 40 miles of Pearson, you have to have a transponder with mode C, even though it would not normally be transponder airspace. So to sort of tie this all up, if you're on a VFR flight plan, that doesn't matter because your flight plan is, is handled through uh, flight service. Air traffic control asks you to select a certain code called squawking a transponder code. You do that, it doesn't work. Your best course of action is is really probably gonna be get your transponder fix. Um, there's nothing saying that you can't uh, complete the flight, but if you are going into a busy terminal area, um, you're probably gonna face a barrier in that you're, you're gonna try and operate in airspace where a transponder is required. Now, if you're in an airspace where, transpon where a transponder is required, there's a pretty good chance that they're going to ask you to leave. Um, and of course, one of the ways you can leave is to go back to the airport where you uh, where you departed from, and hopefully you can get the transponder fixed. Uh, otherwise, they may just uh, use a phrase like "remain clear of Class C airspace," meaning don't be in the airspace where a transponder is required. Having said all of this, we need to remember that a transponder is an important safety feature because if air traffic control is able to see you on radar, they can provide that information to other aircraft who might not otherwise see you. So I hope that answered the question.